Hey everyone, Dr. Joanne here, creator of Learn to Heal Yourself. Welcome to my latest blog, What to Do with Your Me Too Anger. So I've been watching the Me Too movement on the sidelines for several months now. I've been watching and listening and it's it's just it's this is such an important topic to talk about right now. So we have men's reactions versus women's reactions and when this Me Too movement first began, I was listening to the men around me. Um and there was a lot of talk about like well are we done with this? You know, is this just going to keep going on and on? Are we going to keep bringing rehashing the history and you know, are we done yet? And I just, you know, I didn't say anything at the time. I was just taking it all in. And then meanwhile, women's reactions were getting angrier and angrier. And the thing is, when you're angry, no one listens to you. So we'll get into that discussion in a little bit. But, um, you know, something else that came up early on in the discussion, too, um, was the victim mentality. And you know, if the women have felt like victims and, you know, if you stay in that victim energy, when, when we talk about mindset and, and working on working on our thoughts and our emotions and our beliefs and that kind of thing, if you hold on to that victim mentality, you stay stuck. You don't, you don't make any progress. You don't, um, you know, transcend that. And there's, there's a lot of reasons for people to stay stuck in that. But, you know, again, that's just, that's just, as I've been watching, and listening that's one thing I've, I've taken a note of is um, the victim mentality within there and it's not right or wrong it, it just is I've I've had the victim mentality for quite a while in my life only recently become to come to the the place where I can feel my power again and brings me to another just point here the power struggle so you know not to stereotype but i'm going to because you know there is a power struggle between men and women and it's part of just how we've been brought up we don't we haven't learned any different it's you know when i was growing up the man was in charge and the woman was not and the woman was to be seen and not heard and you know your opinions were not valued and you know that was all changing in my lifetime and you know still to this day there's there are men that that feel like they you know they own the woman and they can do whatever they want and part of it is they just don't know how we feel and so anyway we, we haven't been able to have really a discussion along these lines so it this has created a lot of divisiveness in our country and you know let alone the political divisiveness um but it's just there's so much divisiveness it's you know us versus them and all this stuff and we're never going to get where we want to go if we hold on to these types of energies so this discussion really is all about moving past that but just as i've been watching and listening been noticing men's reactions women's reactions the victim mentality power struggles divisiveness and cluelessness you know, I, I've been talking a lot to a lot of different men, like I said, especially my husband. And, you know, he was brought up that, you know, men are not supposed to feel their feelings. And, you know, it's don't cry and, you know, buck up, walk it off. And, and so he is just clueless or has been clueless about his own emotions let alone the emotions of anyone around him. And so it's been really, really interesting having those discussions with him because, uh, you know, up until me being in his life, no one ever called him out on any bad behavior, you know, like making comments about other women and, um, you know, innuendos and different things. Like no one ever called him out on it. He thought it was okay. It's just what guys do, uh, you know, so that's what we've been seeing. For so long, we, we've, you know, so a lot of women have just let guys get away with saying things. And, you know, if we do call them out on it, it's come from a place of anger and no one's listening when you're angry. And again, we'll, we'll come to that in a little bit. But, but just how, you know, men 
have been brought up to not feel their emotions. Women have been brought up to feel everybody's emotions. So we've been carrying the, the emotional weight for everybody. And, you know, it's it's time for that to get rebalanced and, and everyone to kind of listen to each other um, as we move forward. And another part, too, is, you know, with the Kavanaugh hearings last week and everything, I got really, really pissed. I got so triggered. And, you know, and part of that is a lot of my own, the sexual abuse from my own history was coming up. Um, and, you know, the, and I didn't make a big deal about this. And I've never said this publicly at all. And very few people in my life know this, but what the hell, you know, this is what really goes on. My first sexual experience when I was young, my very first sexual experience, I was raped. Um, along with another friend, you know, we were out drinking for our first time. And, you know, I remember the house, I remember the person, I remember the room. Do I remember the day? No. Uh, I've kind of got an idea about how old I was and, you know, what time of the year it was and everything. Um, and we were so drunk and, you know, Basically, I remember being so drunk. This was my first time being drunk and was basically passed out. But I could hear this guy raping my friend and she was saying, no, no, it hurts. It hurts. Please stop. Please stop. And I knew I was next and I passed out. I just passed out. I didn't know what to do. I was so scared. And sure enough, I got raped too. Um, but anyway, so the thing is like the, the whole back to the cluelessness kind of thing with the guys, um, you know, I'd already... I already knew that I couldn't go to my mom because she couldn't handle it emotionally. And I knew absolutely that I couldn't go to my dad and tell him because he couldn't handle it either. So we keep these things to ourselves. And I don't want you to think badly about my parents. It's just, it was the time. It was, you know, they're not, they weren't, they didn't have any tools to, to on what to do with these kinds of emotions. So they didn't know what to do. And I didn't know what to do. All I knew was I couldn't go talk to any adult. Um, because they couldn't handle it. So I had to handle it on my own and I had to stuff it and bury it. And so it created a lot of issues that have come up in my marriage that, you know, we've had to work through. But, you know, it's it's not that big of a deal. But I want, I want you know, you guys to know that like this happens all the time. And we just don't tell you all about it because you just don't know what to do with it. You're not going to be able to help us in a way that we need help and support. So we keep it to ourselves, but you know what? We get pissed about it. We get super, super pissed, <laughs> so, but that doesn't do anyone any good to hang on to that anger. So we also have in our society, we have beliefs about just what is right and how to live. And you know, it's only been in my lifetime that women have even gotten the right to have their own checking account or their own credit card in their own name. So you know, there's a lot of changes that have gone on. So, but it's time to listen to each other, but we can't listen if we're angry. So again, last week I watched my own anger well up. Again, I was really, really pissed off and I was pissed off at all men. And I took it out on my husband, which wasn't fair at all. Um, but you know what? And I used to be a really, really angry person all of my life or most of my life. So I know all about anger. And I know no one listens to you when you are angry. You turn other people off. They don't want to be around you. It's like you're spewing this awful red mist and everyone, they can't wait to get away from you as fast as they can. So, you know, if you end up being, you're just a big complainer and you just, no one wants to be around you. And I know that because that was me. And now I'm on the other side of it. And I used to be angry probably 90% of the time. And now it's more like 10 to 15% of the time. So my world has just changed a lot, but do things still trigger me? Yes, but I've got some tools. I've learned some tools along the way. And one other thing I want to say too is like, especially women that are angry because we've held this stuff in so long. We've been, you know, we just haven't, we haven't talked about these things. It's, it's not, it's not ladylike, it's not ladylike to be angry. And these things are things that no one, you know, the men in our lives usually don't want to hear about. And even the women in our lives, they don't want to hear about these things. They don't want to have these deep discussions. Um, so a lot of times men, especially this is what happened me, to me growing up, they would turn it around like, oh, are you on the rag? 
Oh, you know, and then when you're older, like, oh, are you in menopause? Ugh, that's going to last several years. You're just going to be way too difficult to deal with. And so, you know, and that's not fair either, because we all need to talk and work through our emotions. But, you know, that so that kind of not listening to each other doesn't help. So if you were angry, if you've been angry, you simply must get to a calm place. Otherwise, again, no one's going to hear you. No one will understand what the real issue is. You can't start a, a discussion while you are angry. So again, here's the deal. Anger does not solve anything. It's an energy. Anger, anger is an energy. It's a heavy energy and it's like a problem. And problems are not solved in the same energy. So problem like, you know, your anger is not going to be solved while you are still angry. So you have to shift your thoughts and your energy to something lighter so you can reach your solution. So something will will pop into your head that, that will feel better. And when you're angry, you are wrong. You're just flat out wrong. You make the wrong assumptions. You have incorrect perceptions. You think other people are out to get you, out to attack you. You take things personally. And how do I know? Again, I was there for most of my life. I know this stuff and I can see it plain as day in other people. So you just, you know, I and your ego is part of the problem here too. You've been listening to your ego for too long and your ego makes up fear and you get angry about things you think you're being attacked and it's just not the case at all. But while you're angry and you think you're right and you're, you're justifying your anger, and blaming other people, constantly blaming other people in other situations, um, you're not going to let any of that go until you're able to see things in a different light. And for me, that was A Course in Miracles. And A Course in Miracles says you're never upset for the reason you think. And that was absolutely my truth. I was never upset. I always thought it was somebody doing something to me and I had all these hurt feelings that I was angry about. But really what it was, it ended up being the underlying thing was just I had this, these thoughts and beliefs like I'm not good enough, I don't matter, and that I have to continually prove myself to others, especially men. And, you know, when you can turn those things around, those thoughts and those beliefs around, that's when everything else just smooths out in your life. So your emotions are one of your key guidance systems. So if you're feeling a negative emotion, you're off track a little bit. You've been listening to your ego. You're you're off in the weeds somewhere. So you know your fear, your anger, um, resentment, all of those kinds of things. Hate. Those are your your guidance system. It's telling you like, hey, take a hot second, calm down a little bit, see if you can see this in a different light. Um, and likewise, if you're feeling happy and peaceful and calm, that's your guidance system that you're on the right path, that you're not listening to your ego, you're listening to your true inner self and everything's good. So again, men have been taught to block their emotions and women have learned to feel everyone's emotions. So the scales are tipped and you know, that's just like, mostly what goes on. And I know that's not every circumstance, but just hear me out because A Course in Miracles teaches also that if you're looking for conflict, you will find it. And if you're looking for understanding, you will find that as well. So as we learn to have discussions and move forward, both of us need to learn some new things. We need to have a new understanding. So we need to listen and understand each other that's when we can begin our, our conversation. That's when we start the healing process. But you know, it really all begin the healing process really starts with you first individually. And you know, where you go from anger, you've got choices. Anger is just on the emotional scale. If you're using it as your guidance system, you know, depression is below anger. And so anger going from depression to anger feels a little bit better. But other people don't like it when you're angry. And so you can either stuff it and experience resentment over time, or you can transcend that anger and move on to things that feel even better than anger, like frustration and then acceptance and then peace and then calm and happiness, that kind of thing. Uh, but most people, they never move past anger. They just hover at anger, 
um, stuff it, experience resentment, or they go back down to depression and they'll flip back and forth from anger and depression and just stay in those cycles and they'll, they'll stay stuck. So you really want to be able to move past that again, because it's all about having a discussion and being able to listen to each other and understand each other. So transcending anger, you're going to look within at your own thoughts. It really, it all begins with you. And I've got another video called cause and effect, which cause is your thoughts and effect is everything that goes on around you, your, your body, um, your life circumstances. So if you don't like what's going on with your body, with physical symptoms and such, you don't like what's going on in your life circumstances, you won't really like what's going on in your thoughts. You've got to look at your thoughts and clean that up. So it all it also includes, you know, when you're transcending anger and looking at healing your own thoughts, it's forgiving others and forgiving yourself and learning to let go of old wounds. And I was, I dabbled in this stuff for decades before I finally got it. A Course in Miracles finally gave me the tools where I felt like I could do this. It, it showed me that I had been listening to my ego and then things were not as they seemed. So then it was easier to forgive others and forgive myself and let go of my old wounds. And, you know, my life changed so dramatically. I, you know, just my, I regained my health and my energy and I was happy and my relationships got a lot easier. And I'm so grateful to have found A Course in Miracles. And this is what I do now is teach others these tools with my signature course, Learn to Heal Yourself. It's about healing your life, but it starts in your thoughts. So we look at and break down all of these things and I teach you everything that I've learned along the way. So... If you want to have a conversation with others and you want to move past all of this junk that we're seeing in our outer lives, you got to start loving yourself. You've got to start knowing that you do matter, that you are enough and knowing that you don't need other people's approval or acceptance because that's an inside job. You, your approval and acceptance is found within when you connect with your inner guidance system. And it's about, you know, feeling, feeling peaceful, feeling peaceful and calm and happy. And that's when everything starts to work out for the better in your life. And, you know, and at that point, then you can start to speak for others who have lost their voice and start to have this conversation. And is everyone going to agree with you? No. And that's not the point. But the point is that that's where the conversation begins. This is where the listening happens. So A Course in Miracles helped me get to this place. And again, am I here 100% of the time in peace, calm, and happiness, and you know, fun loving? I'm not here 100% of the time, but I'm here most of the time. And I so, it's been such a life changer for me, a game, a total game changer to be happy and healthy most of the time that I don't tolerate not feeling well. I don't tolerate when I'm off in the weeds and feeling angry. It's not very often that I'm there, but I have the tools to get right back on track. And you know, stress makes all of us sick. It causes pain, suffering, and illness. So if you want to make lasting, significant changes in your life, you simply must train your mind to stop listening to your ego. It's what you have to do. And A Course in Miracles helped me do that, and that's what most of my membership is based on. Is I give you all the tools that I learned along the way. I hold your hand all throughout it. I'm always adding new training to it. We go and dive in through A Course in Miracles. A lot of people that are familiar with it say it's it's too long, it's too complicated. Well, I break it all down for you, so you don't have to worry about that. And it's a membership program, so and it's very, very affordable. I've made it so affordable so that anyone can do this. And you don't have to stay, you stay with it as long as it's benef benefiting you. So if you try it out for a month and it's not for you, you just request a cancel and you don't pay anything more. Um, but you stay, no one's done that yet. And you know, everyone has continued in there because it is worth it. You are worth it. Again, your anger, you must transcend the anger because when you are angry, no one listens and you can't have that conversation, that deep conversation that we are really needing right now. So if you're interested 
and learn to heal yourself. It's going to be in the comments below. Make sure to like this video, especially if you resonate with this and, and what I'm saying. Share it with other people who you think might benefit. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.